Greetings, here we are looking at the capital asset pricing model, CAPM, and we'll be learning how to calculate and interpret the required return. Now, first and foremost, we want to break risk down into its two components, market risk and firm-specific risk. For market risk, we're saying this is a risk that you have to live with. It's not affected by diversification. If you're operating in the market, then you have to live with market risk. If you're flying an airplane, then you have to live with the risks of flying an airplane. Right, so market risk, we have to live with it. It's also called undiversifiable risk or systematic risk. Systematic risk meaning that it's just a part of the system of investing. It's a part of the system, so you're stuck with it. On the other hand, firm specific risk. As the name suggests, it's specific to probably a particular firm or industry. And this one you can minimize through diversification. So proper diversification can basically eliminate firm specific risk. It's also called diversifiable risk and it's called unsystematic risk, which is saying it is not something that is a part of the system of investing. It is not linked to investing. It is linked to a specific firm or probably even sometimes an industry. All right, so now that we have this, let's jump into CAPM. So this is our CAPM formula. KS equal KRF plus beta times KM minus KRF. Now, KS stands for the required return of the stock. This is the rate of return that we require to compensate for the stock's market risk. It's a minimum return that we will accept for this investment. We would happily accept more, but we will not accept less. The risk-free rate, KRF. Now, this is the rate that we would accept if there is basically no risk. Right? It's a base rate for calculation since this is a rate for no risk. So any risk that we accept, we have to be compensated for. And this is a part of being a risk averse investor. Risk averse means that to accept more risk, we require a greater compensation in the form of a greater return. So the risk free rate is our base rate. It's normally given as either the T-bill rate or the treasury bond rate. Beta. Beta measures the stock's market risk. It's a measure of the level of market risk in the stock, yeah. The percentage change in the stock price when there's a 1% change in the market index. And the market indexes we refer to are like S&P 500 or Jamaica Stock Exchange Combined Index. Right, so these measure what is, what is happening in the overall market. And we want to see when the market goes up or down, how does it impact this particular stock? Right, so it's a measure of the stock's market risk. And beta assumes that the stock is going to be in a well diversified portfolio next km the expected market return now this is the overall level of return that people are experiencing in the market in the market right we can calculate it using a market index example as we said s p 500 or jc combined index jamaica stock exchange right so that's expected market return KM minus KRF, that's the market risk premium. This is the difference between the expected market return and the risk-free rate. It's the extra return that is being earned in the overall market for taking risk. Right, so it's the amount above and beyond the risk-free rate. Now, beta times KM minus KRF, that's the part that we're adding to KRF. This is what we call our equity risk premium or equity risk premium. And this is the total amount that we should add to the risk-free rate, the base rate, to decide how much we need to compensate for the stock's market risk. All right, so this is our CAPM formula. Let's look at some basic examples. First, what is the expected return for the market if the risk-free rate is 4% and the market risk premium is 5.5%? So remember that the market risk premium is 5.5%. That means that this is the amount that is being earned in the market above and beyond the risk-free rate. So it means that the market return is 5.5% above the risk-free rate. So we can just add and see that the market return is 4% plus 5.5% or 9.5%. Or we, for those who like using the equations, you can just go to the equation. Market risk premium is equal to market rate minus the risk-free rate. Put in a known, market risk premium is 5.5%. Risk-free rate is 4% and solve for the market rate. Let's add 4% to both sides, bring the 4% over, and we have market rate equal 9.5%. Here's another one. 
Calculate and interpret the required return for a stock with a beta of 1 if the market risk premium is 5.5% and the risk free rate is 4%. So here we go. Here's our formula. All right, put it in the known. So risk free rate 4%, beta is 1. And in this case, the market risk premium, which is market rate minus KRF, that's all of what we have in the bracket, is equal to 5.5%. So we're not doing any subtractions in the bracket. We're just placing the market risk premium in the bracket. Right, please note, now we can just go to our calculator and pump this in, but we could go through it. K is equal to 4% plus 5.5%, which gives 9.5%, or we could just plug the amount in our calculator and work it out. 4 plus 1 times 5.5. Yeah, that also works. Interpretation. A return of 9.5% is required to compensate for the stock's market risk. In other words, the lowest return that we would expect the lowest expected return that we would accept for this investment is 9.5%. We would gladly accept more, but we will not accept less. Base rate, lowest we will accept, 9.5%. Because this is a required return for investing in this stock. If we're using a calculator, we'll just punch in the figures. 4 plus 1 times 5.5 and it will give you 9.5%. So it's easy there as well. All right, let's continue. Interpreting beta. So beta tells you a lot. When beta is equal to one, it's saying that the stock has average market risk. The required return will be equal to the market return. Right, we call these stocks average stocks. When beta is less than one, we say that the stock has below average market risk, which means that it is less risky than the overall market. In this case, the required return is going to be lower than the market return. And Last but not least, when beta is above 1, we're saying the stock has above average market risk. Mean it has greater risk than the overall market. In this case, the required return is going to be greater than the market return. All right, so once we see beta, we should be able to have that indication of whether the required return will be greater or less than or equal to the market return. Continuing. Calculate another example. Calculate and interpret the required return for a stock with a beta of 0 0.5. Now, a beta of 0 0.5 means we expect that the ex required return will be lower than the market return because beta is less than 1. So, calculate and interpret the required return for a stock with a beta of 0 0.5. If the expected market return is 9.25% and the risk-free rate is 3.52%. So, no, we don't have the market risk premium. We have the actual market return so we will do the subtraction for ourselves here we go market rate required return is equal to the risk-free rate 3.52 plus 0 0.5 times in brackets the market rate 9.25 minus the risk-free rate 3.52 we could go to our calculator but we could do it as well work with the bracket first 9.25 minus 3.52 that gives 5.73 so remember bod mass brackets first multiply then add or subtract so brackets first 5.73 then we multiply 0 0.5 times 5.73 that gives us 2.865 then we do our addition and we get a required return of 6.385 or we could have gone straight to the calculator all right let's interpret first 6.385 in this case is the return that we require to compensate for the stock's market risk this is the lowest that we would accept the lowest expected return that we would accept for this investment as noted we would gladly accept more but we would not accept less all right if we're using our calculator just punch in the figures 3.52 plus 0 0.5 times in brackets 9.25 minus 3.52 and that will give you the same figure 6.385 percent now comparing the expected return with the required return we're taking it a little step further so here we go Expected return, what is this? It's a rate of return that is being predicted for the stock. It's saying if we invest in the stock now, this is the rate of return that we can expect to earn. It's calculated based on a few things. We look at the current price of the stock, the expected future, future price, and if there are any expected dividend payments. There's an inverse relationship between the current price and the expected return. A higher current price results in a lower expected return. A lower current price results in a high expected return remember the principle of investing in stocks is buy low sell high that's a general principle so 
the lower the price is the higher the return we normally expect to earn. Example to calculate the expected return. Simple example, we're calculating here the holding period return. So current price 25, expected price in a year 35, expected dividend payments $2. Punch the figures in for the formula. So the formula is holding period return is the expected future price minus the current price plus any expected dividends divided by in total the current price. So we have 35 minus 25 plus 2 all divided by 25. That works out to 0.48 or 48%. Right. So the expected return for this stock if we invest at $25 is going to be 48%. If the price goes up before we purchase it, then the expected return will go down. If the price goes down before we purchase it, the expected return will go up. Now here's another one, a complete example. Stock X has the following probability distribution of expected future returns. So we have the table showing the state of the economy, the different probabilities and the different possible returns. Next, we have the expected market return is 6.5% and the risk-free rate is 2.25%. Calculate the expected return and required return, given that the, beta, the stock has a beta of 1.75. That's greater than the base rate of 1. So that means this stock is going to have a required return that is greater than the market rate. The expected market rate here, the market return is 6.5%. So without doing the calculation, we know that the required return is going to be greater than 6.5%. And then the question is, would you invest in this stock? So let's do the calculation. So starting with the expected return, this table is saying there are three possible future states of the economy. If there's a recession, which is a, there's a 24% chance of a recession, and if there's a recession, the return will be negative 5%, we'll lose 5%. There's a 57% chance of a normal economy, and if there's a normal economy, we'd earn an 8% return. There's a 19% chance of a boom, and if there's a boom, we would earn a return of 15%. So to calculate the expected return, we're going to multiply each probability by its return, the associated return, and total the results. So we're going to say here, the expected return is 0 0.24 times negative 5 plus 0.57 times 8 plus 0.19 times 15. If we punch that in the calculator, 0 0.2 times, 0 0.24 times negative 5 plus 0.57 times 8 plus 0.19 times 15, it will give us our answer of 6.21. Right. Or we could go the long route, do them one by one and add it. We're still going to get 6.21% as our expected return. So if, we're, if we invest in this stock now, we can expect a return of 6.21%. Right, let's look on the other side. Using our formula and punching in the figures. So we have the required return is equal to the risk-free rate of 2.25% plus beta of 1.75 times the expected market return, KM, 6.5% minus the risk-free rate of 2.25%. Now remember that in this case, we, we have gotten the expected market return and not the market risk premium. If we had gotten the market risk premium, then the market risk premium would have been all of KM minus KRF, everything in the bracket, and we would not have been doing a subtraction. All right? so please note, because we have the expected market return, which is KM, we do our own subtraction. All right? so this works out to be Nine point, roughly 9.69%, exactly 9.6875, but roughly 9.69. So would you invest in this stock? And the answer is a resounding no. Right, if we use the calculator again, just showing. Right. So the answer, would you invest? Re expected return, 6.21. Required return, 9.69. No. I would not make this investment. Right. The stock is not projected to generate enough return to compensate for its market risk. Risk. It needs to generate at least 9.69% to compensate for the market risk, and it's only projected to generate 6.21%. So this stock, we would say, is currently overvalued. The price is too high right now. We would only buy the stock if the price was to fall significantly enough. Now, just looking at some conclusions that we can draw. When the expected return is equal to the required return, we can say that the stock is fairly valued. It means that the stock is projected to generate exactly enough return to compensate for its market risk. When the expected return is greater than the required return, we say the stock is undervalued. Right? In this case, the stock is projected to generate more than enough return to compensate 
for its market risk. So the price is below the true price, the true required price. So this type of stock is a very good buy because we expect the price to quickly move up. Right? So we can quickly make a gain on this stock. However, when the expected return is below the required return, the stock is said to be overvalued or overpriced. In this case, the stock is not projected to generate enough return to compensate for its market risk. Looking at an, ex an example, expected return is 10%, required return is 7 Would we invest? Yes, we would. We require 7% to compensate for the risk, and this stock is generating more than that. So since expected return is greater than required return, this stock is undervalued or underpriced, and it's a good investment. The stock is projected to generate a return of 10%, which is more than the 7% return required to compensate for its market risk. Good investment. All right, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe for to get more content as it comes along. All the best, guys. We'll talk soon.